Hey guys, it's Seth and Paul for the Everything Money Channel. In this episode, Paul clearly defines and describes the difference between mutual funds and ETFs, the pros and cons of each, which one he likes, which one you should probably be investing in if you're interested in getting in the market right now on the Everything Money Channel. Paul, we started this channel because you enjoy teaching, you enjoy um, flexing, and um, you enjoy sharing your knowledge. And so this is another opportunity for people to learn the difference between mutual fund and ETFs. I and need... it's also an opportunity for people to... Smash that like button right now. Pretty please with sugar on top. Yeah, yeah. He does his job. It takes two... I know, Paul. I just love how you, you, t- you bring it back. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Take two seconds. Please smash that thumbs up. It really helps us. Mutual funds versus ETFs. I'm somewhat confused, Paul. Let us know what these are. I'm a new investor. I want to get into the market. Don here says he's opening up a Fidelity account today with my help. Um, Maybe, maybe. And uh, so tell us what the difference between these two and the pros and cons of each, please. All right. So these are very like um, the ETF thing has been a very popular thing as of late. So the main thing, everybody's heard of mutual funds. Mutual funds were very big before 2000. Then 2000 started to happen. ETFs started to become popular. So mutual funds are actively managed for the most part. Actively managed portfolios. By whom? So what happens is a company like Fidelity will start a mutual fund. They'll hire a money manager. That money manager is paid X amount of dollars. They're given a team. And those costs can be up, upwards of 1% to 2% per year on that mutual fund to do research and try to beat the market. Okay? Their costs, like I said, are 1% to 2% per year on average. That's huge. You got to remember... Over the long run, you're happy to make, if you're, if you're matching the market at 10%, you're happy. Mm-hmm. You can be losing 10 to 20% of that just by hiring a mutual fund. Not mm-hmm. only that, there's other things called load mutual funds where they charge you a commission up front. Those are usually sold by Edward Jones and all these other loser companies that just trying to, just trying to basically make money off of selling you a commission, selling you a product to get a commission. Fine. ETFs. This is a big thing that our friend Warren Buffett loves. He always tells people, Buy an ETF, put it away, don't think about it. Mm -hmm. ETFs are low cost. They can be as low as 0.1 to 0.4% per year. So significantly lower than 1% to 2%. Their job is not to be actively managed, not active management. And they're doing things like sector investments or or um, index investments like S&P, Dow Jones. So what they're going to do is, for an index, they're going to sit there and buy every company in the S&P and say, listen, pay us 0.1%. We're going to buy every company in the S&P, and you're going to get very close to the S&P return over time anyhow. Why pay us to to, to actively manage? Mm -hmm. Here's an interesting fact that I read many years ago. I don't know how accurate this number is anymore. 82% of actively managed mutual funds do not beat the market. Mm. So you're paying this huge return. You're paying this huge fee every year and not beat the market. Well, why don't they beat the market? These are professionals, right? They're actively managed. Well, guys, it's because of, num- it's because of numrods like you that they don't beat the market. Like me? Not you, but like the people out there. All our viewers? They're trying. Yeah, you don't like that. They're trying. You guys are all very short-term oriented. Why didn't I beat the market this year? What happened? Yes. So these mutual fund managers are always trying to chase returns as opposed to doing good value because guys like me i'm looked at as crazy for looking for value but i only have myself and my family to 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 invest for so i can be as long-term oriented i want i don't care if i don't beat the market for three or four or five years but imagine if you owned a mutual fund and it goes three to four years without beating the market what are you going to do leave the mutual fund you're going to leave the mutual fund so it's called career risk Career risk. They're going to do what everybody else is doing because if they don't do well, if they lose 10% and the market goes down 10%, what are they going to say? Well, look, the market went down 10%. I went down 10%. What can I do about it? Yeah. That's the thing about mutual funds. They're really only chase. You're just paying for them to chase returns anyhow. For you to really beat the market, if you want to, you got to go to guys who are thinking different. Most, 99.9% of people cannot handle that. 
When I invest with somebody, I look at their process. The guy I'm invested, the only person in the world I'm invested in right now hasn't beaten the market over six years. Mm. And all my friends are like, then why'd you invest with them? Like, because his process is good and over the long haul, he will beat. I know guys running multi-billion dollar family offices who criticize the guys I follow because they're like, yeah, they haven't beaten the market in years. I'm like, yeah, but I don't care about that. I care about full market cycles, bear to bull market. So if I'm you, stick to ETFs. Why go deal with this mumbo jumbo? Why go deal with paying all the fees? Why go deal with that for them not to beat the market? Go stick to an ETF. ETF, you're going to have low fees. It's going to follow an exact index or sector. Why waste your time? What I'm doing here now is, this is Google Finance. This is all free, guys. You can use this. Go to finance.google.com and look up your any stock, ETF, anything like that. You just type it in there. Boom, it goes. I use Y charts. You don't need Y charts. I just use it. I pay a premium for it, but it also shows me a lot of things. So this is the S&P 500 ETF. SPY? SPY. Okay. This buys every company in the S&P, all 500 of them, in the exact same proportion as the market has them. What's the expense ratio? Wow. 0.09%. 0.09%. Versus 1% or 1.5%. And this is basically going to match the market within 0.1% every single year. You're going to get your dividends. You're going to do everything. You're going to get everything you, um, you invested in. Why even deal with it? Just let it happen. So, look at the holdings here. All the companies. It tells you all the companies here. Top 25 holdings. It'll show you every, every single company in the S&P is in here. So, let's go to a different ETF. Let's go to the airline one, Jets. J-E-T-S. Now, this one has a little bit higher expense ratio, 0.6%. I don't know why, but they're trying to buy companies that are airlines or airline manufacturers, things like that. So if you look at the holdings here, Southwest, Delta, Cargo Jet, Alaska Air, General Dynamics. Um, I think Boeing's in here somewhere. China Southern Airlines, that's one of the biggest ones in the world. Um, either way, they're buying all the airline ones. So what you can do there is instead of buying an index, you can buy a sector. All right, I want to own the airline sector because I think they've been hit, hit hard. That's what you can do. You can go buy jets. So instead of betting on one specific airline, you can say, hey, I don't think airlines are going away. Let me go buy these airlines. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's a cruise line ETF or a travel ETF. And these are things that you can do if you want to trade a little bit to, to make, make investments that are a little more strategic. You can go do that with ETFs. You can sit there and say, wait a second, this industry has been hit pretty hard, but I don't think it's going away. And I think it's just over-exaggerated. Let me go buy them. That's what you can do to kind of play the market a little bit as opposed to buying an individual stock. Now, with an ETF, you're going to get a lot less volatility because there's a lot of stocks in them. So it's a lot more likely to stay, go up and down more consistently. So that's a benefit of them. Same with a mutual fund. But the thing about ETFs is you can trade them every day during the day. A mutual fund, you only buy and close them at the end of the day. It has to wait till the day ends. They finish their, their, their asset value, and then you can buy and sell their shares at that point. But an ETF trades like a stock. You can buy it and sell it during the day, throughout yeah. the day from 9.30 to 4 Eastern time. So there's a lot of benefits. I prefer ETFs for people. Hey, I invest in ETFs sometimes. Like if I look at it, I'm, I'm invested in jets. Well, I don't own jets, but I've, I bought options on jets. I've sold options on jets for future prices. So these are the things that I do. Even I can use ETFs to try to hit my, stri- my strategies over the long haul. Does that make sense? Strategery. Strategery. So I'm trying to think of where else we can look at. Um, let's look up, uh, okay, so uh, popular ETFs. Let's look that up. Mm, interesting. These are the most popular ETFs since the pandemic started. Okay, SPY, XLF, that's a financial sector. That's an ETF based fully on the financial sector. Ultra short QQQ, do not do that one. What is that one? Um, that one's betting on the NASDAQ falling, but I think it's three to one. Um, emerging markets, so emerging markets are foreign countries that might be growing. You can buy an ETF on emerging markets. Those are supposed to do better over the long haul because of the fact that other countries can grow faster than we can. Uh, Vector Gold, I have that one. That's the one of my ones that's up like 80% or something like that. This buys a lot of gold miners because gold has been down for a while. So I bought gold miners I, went, I didn't know how to analyze a specific gold company, so I went and bought a gold miner. I went and bought two gold mining ETFs. It bought me like 30 or 40 because I thought to myself, if the market falls, gold becomes popular, 
gold miners will make more money. I don't want to bet on specific gold miners, so I bought the ETFs. And I'm up mm-hmm. 64% on one since March, and I'm up 81% on the other one since March. That doesn't mean it's going to continue to do that. That's one of the ones I look at going, oh boy, is this too much? But gold's hitting all-time highs as it, as it goes higher and higher. If it goes higher and higher, these will do better. Mm. So these are examples of some of, the, some, of the, some of the ETFs you can buy. I wouldn't buy these short ones. Just stick to long-term strategic ones that fit your goals. But you can also have fun. Like I said, if you think gold's going up, you can go buy the ETF for gold and make money that way. Uh, I bought USO and it didn't do well. USO was is not, a, is, it's um, not an ETF. It's an ETN, maybe. I don't remember, but that that's a weird one. That, that I misunderstood that one myself. I thought it was actually buying actual natural gas or uh-huh. gas oil. Mm-hmm. It was not. Yeah, I thought it was. There's actually no way to directly buy oil, which makes no sense to me. I don't think in so, an ETF. So in closing, you really like the sort of the set it and forget it mindset of buying an ETF and just let it roll. But it even lets you trade. Like if you want to make strategic trades like gold, or you want to make a trade like um. Like airlines and things like that. That allows you to do that with an ETF. Instead of worrying about mutual funds and paying all those fees and all that stuff. Smash that like button. Follow other videos. Comment below. And Paul will answer your questions. ETFs and mutual funds. Thanks for joining us on Everything Money Channel. We have an Instagram page. We have a Facebook page. Check it all out. Follow us. We appreciate your support. Talk soon, guys.